What if I told you that most people preparing for power outages are either massively overpreparing or dangerously underprepared? The difference between surviving comfortably and facing a real crisis isn't about having the biggest generator or the most solar panels, it's about understanding your actual power needs. In this video, you'll discover the exact amount of backup power you need for outages lasting anywhere from 3 days to 3 months, which devices are truly essential versus nice to have, and the biggest mistakes people make when calculating their power requirements. By the end, you'll know exactly how to build a realistic backup power system that won't break the bank but will keep you safe and comfortable when the lights go out. Welcome to Prep Pantry, where we cut through the noise and give you practical preparedness advice that actually works. If you find this helpful, hit that like button and subscribe for more no-nonsense prepping content. Let's start with a reality check that might surprise you. Most people think about power outages as one big category, but there are actually three distinct types you need to plan for, and each requires a completely different strategy. First, we have short-term outages lasting one to three days. These are your typical storm-related blackouts or maintenance shutdowns. Here's the truth nobody wants to admit. Your biggest enemy during these outages isn't death or survival, it's boredom. The power will come back on. The stores will reopen. Your main job is maintaining sanity and a little comfort while you wait it out. Then there are medium-term outages, lasting one to three weeks. This is where most serious preppers focus their efforts, and for good reason. These outages test your systems and your resolve. They're long enough to drain your phone batteries, spoil your food, and make you question whether normalcy will ever return. But they're also manageable with the right preparation. Finally, we have long-term outages lasting a month or more. These are the scenarios that keep preppers awake at night. Major infrastructure failures, EMPs, or cascading grid collapses. At this level, survival depends on a combination of preparation, adaptability, and, honestly, a fair amount of luck. Now, here's where most people go wrong. They either prepare for a three-day outage like it's the apocalypse, buying massive generators and solar arrays they'll never need, or they prepare for a three-month outage with just a few flashlights and hope for the best. The smart approach is understanding what you actually need for each scenario. Let's talk about what you really consume in terms of power. Your full-size refrigerator, the one humming away in your kitchen right now, uses between one and one and a half kilowatt hours every single day. That's massive when you're running on backup power. To put that in perspective, a typical car battery stores about half a kilowatt hour of usable power. Your fridge alone would drain a car battery in less than 12 hours. But here's what's interesting. You don't actually need to keep everything cold. During short outages, you can minimize opening the fridge and use your car's inverter to run it for just 30 minutes every few hours to maintain temperature. For longer outages, you need to completely rethink your approach. The devices that actually keep you alive and functional require surprisingly little power. Your cell phone, about 10 to 15 watt hours per day. A small LED lantern, maybe five watt hours for several hours of light. A battery-powered radio, practically nothing. Even a laptop might only use 50 watt hours per day if you're careful about usage. The biggest mistake people make is trying to maintain their normal lifestyle during an outage. They want to run their big screen TV, keep the house at 72 degrees, and maintain full refrigeration. That's not realistic or necessary for survival. The goal should be maintaining essential functions, communication, basic lighting, food safety, and personal security. For short-term outages, your strategy should be elegantly simple. Follow what I call the 3 2, one battery rule. For every device that takes batteries, have three sets, one in use and two as backup. That means if you have four flashlights, you need 12 sets of batteries total. It sounds like a lot, but batteries are cheap and they last for years if stored properly. Power banks are your lifeline for electronic devices. Start with 10,000 milliamp hours as your minimum per device, but more is always better. For a typical household with two adults and two kids, I'd recommend at least six power banks total. Yes, that seems excessive, but when the power's been out for two days and everyone's phone is dead, you'll understand why redundancy matters. Here's a game-changing hack most people don't know about. Your car is a massive power bank on wheels. A simple 1,000-watt inverter plugged into your car can power your refrigerator for short periods, charge multiple devices, or even run small appliances. Just remember to run the car for 10 minutes every hour you're drawing power to avoid draining your car battery. For heating, during short winter outages, nothing beats a propane buddy heater with one-pound canisters. Two canisters will heat a small room for one night. Stock up on a dozen canisters and you can handle a week-long winter outage comfortably. For cooling, during summer outages, small USB fans powered by your power banks can provide enough air circulation to make the heat bearable. When outages stretch into weeks, everything changes. Now you need to think about replenishing your power, not just storing it. This is where most preppers get serious about solar panels, and rightfully so. The magic number for medium-term preparedness is 2 kilowatt hours of stored power. That's your baseline. This can come from large power banks, LIFPO4 battery systems, or even multiple car batteries with inverters. This amount of storage gives you enough power for essential devices for several days, buying time for your solar panels to recharge the system. 
Speaking of solar panels, three panels generating about 300 watts each can produce 1,000 to 1,500 watt hours per day under good conditions. That's enough to power essential devices and slowly recharge your batteries. But here's the critical part. Solar is weather dependent. You need backup generation for cloudy periods. This is where generators become essential, but not how most people think. You're not running your generator 24-7 to power your house. You're running it strategically, maybe two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening to charge your batteries and power high consumption tasks like laundry or cooking. Fuel storage becomes critical at this stage. I recommend storing at least 25 gallons of gasoline in 5-gallon containers, rotating them every 6 months. Propane is even better because it stores indefinitely and can power generators, heaters, stoves, and water heaters. A 100-pound propane tank can run a small generator for 50 to 60 hours. Here's something most peppers overlook. Refrigeration strategy needs to completely change for medium-term outages. Forget about keeping your full-sized fridge running. Instead, invest in a DC refrigerator designed for RVs or boats. These incredibly efficient units use only 250 to 300 watt-hours per day, less than one-fifth of your home fridge. Use it exclusively for medications, essential fresh foods, and items you absolutely cannot afford to lose. Communication becomes absolutely critical during extended outages. Cell towers might be down, internet might be out, and landlines might not work. This is where amateur radio shows shines. A basic handheld ham radio can connect you to emergency networks and other prepared individuals across hundreds of miles. Yes, you need a license, but the test is easier than you think, and the knowledge could save your life. For local communication, FRS and GMRS radios work without licenses and can coordinate with neighbors within a few miles. Invest in a good crank radio for receiving emergency broadcasts and consider the emerging satellite communication options like the T-Mobile Starlink partnership that might be game changers for future outages. Security considerations change dramatically during extended outages. Your normal Wi-Fi security cameras are useless without internet. Instead, focus on battery-powered motion sensors, solar motion lights, and simple alert systems. The goal isn't to create a fortress, it's to be aware of what's happening around your property and avoid being an easy target. When we start talking about outages lasting for months, we're entering a different realm entirely. Your daily power needs don't change much, but your ability to consistently meet those needs becomes the ultimate test of your preparedness. System redundancy becomes non-negotiable. You need multiple ways to generate power. Solar, wind if possible, and reliable generator backup. You need multiple fuel sources and multiple storage systems. When one system fails, and they will fail, you need something else to fall back on. This is also where community becomes essential. No individual or single family can be completely self-sufficient for months. You'll need to work with neighbors for security, resource sharing, and mutual support. The lone wolf approach fails at this level. Fuel management becomes an art form during extended outages. You can't just burn through your gasoline reserves in the first month and hope for the best. You need rationing strategies, fuel-efficient equipment, and alternative energy sources. Wood-burning stoves, alcohol fuel systems, even biogas generation might become necessary. The psychological challenges of extended outages are often underestimated and rapidly deteriorate without active management. Maintaining mental health, managing stress, and dealing with uncertainty require their own preparation. Entertainment, education, and social interaction become survival necessities, not luxuries. Now let's build your practical action plan. Start by conducting an honest assessment of your daily power needs. Make a list of every device you consider essential. Look up its power consumption and calculate your total daily requirement. Most people are shocked to discover they need far less power than they imagined. For building your supplies, start small and expand over time. Begin with basic battery backup for your essential devices. Add power banks and a few solar panels. Gradually work up to larger battery systems and generator backup. This approach spreads the cost over time and lets you test systems before depending on them. Testing and rotation are absolutely critical. Your carefully stored gasoline is worthless if it's turned to varnish. Your backup batteries are useless if they're dead when you need them. Schedule monthly testing of all systems and quarterly rotation of stored fuel and batteries. For serious preppers ready to take things to the next level, communication power requirements deserve special attention. A basic ham radio setup might only need 100 watt-hours per day, but a high-powered base station could need 10 times that. 
plan your power budget accordingly. Security systems on backup power require careful selection. Choose cameras and sensors designed for low power operation. Motion-activated systems are far more efficient than constantly recording cameras. Consider hardwired systems that don't depend on Wi-Fi or internet connectivity. Heating and cooling on backup power is always a compromise. Propane heaters are incredibly efficient and don't strain your electrical system. For cooling, accept that you're not going to maintain 72 degrees in August. Focus on air circulation with efficient fans and cooling strategies like damp towels and cold water. Looking toward the future, keep an eye on emerging technologies. Satellite communication systems are becoming more affordable and accessible. Battery technology continues to improve with better energy density and longer lifespans. Solar panel efficiency keeps increasing while costs decrease. But technology isn't everything. The most important aspect of power preparedness is scalability. Start with what you can afford and gradually build your capabilities. A basic battery and solar setup is infinitely better than no backup power at all. Community cooperation strategies become increasingly important as outages extend. Consider forming a neighborhood preparedness group. Share resources, coordinate security, and pool knowledge. A group of prepared neighbors is far more resilient than individual families trying to go it alone. Remember, the goal isn't to maintain your normal lifestyle during a power outage. The goal is to maintain essential functions safely and comfortably until power is restored. Focus on communication, basic lighting, food safety, security, and heating or cooling. Everything else is luxury. Start your preparation today, even if it's just buying an extra set of batteries or a small power bank. Test your systems regularly, rotate your supplies, and gradually expand your capabilities. When the lights go out, you'll be glad you took the time to prepare properly. The most expensive backup power system is the one you don't have when you need it. But the most useless backup power system is the one that's so complex or expensive that you never actually build it. Find the balance that works for your situation, your budget, and your risk tolerance. Power outages are inevitable. Your response to them doesn't have to be improvised. With proper planning, appropriate equipment, and regular testing, you can turn a potentially stressful situation into a manageable inconvenience. The key is starting now, building gradually, and focusing on what actually matters for survival and comfort. Remember, preparedness isn't about doomsday scenarios. It's about ensuring comfort, safety, and peace of mind for you and your loved ones, no matter what comes your way. That's your complete guide to backup power preparedness. If this helped clarify how much backup power you really need, smash that like button and let me know in the comments what your biggest power preparedness challenge is. Subscribe to Prep Pantry for more practical prepping advice that won't break your budget, and I'll see you in the next video where we'll dive into food storage strategies that actually work in the real world.